gel the shirt is off the cuff. <laughs> Welcome back once again to Joe Shirts Off the Cuff. I know it's been a couple of weeks, so I'm real sorry about that. Life goes on. You know what I mean? I know that some of you are out there going, God damn it, when is Joe the Shirt going to be on again? I need to be more off the cuff. But here I am. Okay, so, ah, uh, as you may have noticed by the title of today's show, <laughs> I am, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to face some demons today, mostly the people that uh, get really, 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 really pissed off when you say uh, something that they find offensive, something that they consider hate speech, something that they find non-PC. Eh, fuck those people. Um, <laughs> like I said, I don't think I've lost enough Facebook friends recently. I need to lose a, 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 just a few more. Just so I can be, you know, really, really underground, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm going for today. So, uh, what's really big in the news these days is, of course, uh, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, he has been nominated to be uh, the next Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, he is a conservative judge. Um, he has not expressed any real opinions about his positions on a lot of topics, like, say, oh, I don't know, abortion. You know, and uh, and I still don't think that even if we do, if, even if he does get on the court, I, I don't think that anybody's going to overturn Roe versus Wade anytime soon. It's I don't, I don't see that happening. That being said, though, uh, it seems to me that a lot of shit has been coming out because I have not seen this kind of caca come out about a uh, nominee of Supreme Court. For Supreme Court Justice, uh, ever. I mean, not even Clarence Thomas, okay? The whole Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill thing, not even that. I mean, compared to that, okay, compared to what's going on right now, uh, Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill was a firecracker. This is a downright nuclear meltdown of the American process, of how we do things in this country, okay? Uh, Brett Kavanaugh has got a few, has got uh, three accusers coming after him with uh, levels of uh, sexual assault, char you know, uh, uh, you know, charges being alleged at him. Um, none of them uh, seeking any type of criminal charges against them. None of them seeking, as far as I can tell, any monetary uh, compensation. Um, but rather, they, they just want to get their story out there. They just want to get their story out there. And I'm like, really? You waited 36 freaking years to get your story out there? You waited till just like, I don't know, a couple of days before he's supposed to go before a committee and it's decided uh, whether or not he gets to be a Supreme Court justice? Really, you waited until now, right? Okay, we're going to go through these one by one. There is, of course, if you don't know the players in this game, uh, Brett Kavanaugh is the nominee. Uh, and his accusers are, one, Christine Blasey Ford, the next one is Deborah Ramirez, and the, the last and most recent one is Julie Swetnick. Now, according to all three of these, these things happened in the very early 80s. So, we're going to go through them, okay? We're going to go through them one by one, and then, you know, you get to listen and then think about what I've said, and then see what it is you think about it. You know, I'm, 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 I want you guys to form your own opinions on these things, okay? All right, let's start out with the first one, Christine Blasey Ford. Now, Christine Blasey Ford is accusing Brett Kavanaugh of, uh, during a party where they were both drunk and underage, she was uh, 15, he was 17, according to her story, uh, that he... Um, uh, took her into a bedroom with uh, his friend Mark Judge, uh, not an actual judge that I know of, but he, he could be. I don't know, but they're they're a lot. They're these these guys are like lifelong friends and classmates. But apparently, uh, they they got her into a bedroom, uh, and uh, he forced her. Uh, and Brett Kavanaugh forced Christine onto the bed, started feeling her up, started trying to take her clothes off, and. 
and uh, and at one point when she was trying to scream for help, he uh, covered her mouth to keep her from screaming. That is the allegation. Now this didn't happen yesterday, didn't happen last year, it didn't happen ten, five years ago or 10 years ago, 15 or 20. It happened 36 years ago when he, when they were both still in high school, allegedly happened. Well, they're both still in high school, okay? Now, just, just so you're all clear, okay? I'm not saying that these women are lying. What I'm saying is that the circumstances in which they brought up these charges seems a little peculiar, but let me continue. Now, according to the how the timeline works here, okay, this happened like 36 years ago, and she didn't even talk about it until she was in therapy with her husband something like, I don't know, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, and uh, upon, upon hearing about Brett Kavanaugh's uh, nomination to the Supreme Court, she decided to write a letter to uh, Diane Feinstein, and uh, you know, le letting letting her know the details of her story. Uh, mind you, under under the under the precipice that it, that she remained anonymous, she did not want her name to be known. That's what she said. So, and but she wanted people to know her story. She wanted people to know that. You know, Brett Kavanaugh is not really qualified to be, you know, a uh, justice of the Supreme Court because of, of what happened to her. Like I said, took her to a bedroom, held her down, felt her up, tried to take her clothes off, and then covered her mouth while, while she was trying to scream for help. That's what allegedly happened. Now, this happens just weeks, just a week or so before the nomination is set to be put before committee to see whether or not he's, you know, eligible to be to, to become the next, you know, Supreme Court Justice. Now, what is really suspicious about this, first and foremost, is that Diane Feinstein did not bring this before the Senate at the time she got the letter. She did not bring this to, I don't know, any investigative body uh, when she got the letter. She did not bring this to the attention of the President uh, as soon as she got this letter. Instead, she held on to this letter for six weeks, almost two months now. She held on to it for six weeks and waited until just before uh, this uh, the the nomination was to go to committee, and then demand and then demanded based on this evidence, this alleged evidence, that the uh, nomination that the vote, the nomination, the the committee, and the vote be held until this is fully investigated. By the FBI. Okay, first and foremost, I got a couple of problems here. <laughs> oh, no, actually, well, before I get into that, now remember, she, uh, uh, let's see, Christine Blasey Ford wanted anonymity. So, Feinstein, you know, brought this letter to the attention of the rest of the Senate and whatever, and had it printed in a newspaper. And upon seeing this in the newspaper, Christine Blasey Ford came forward went to the newspapers and to, and to tell her story to them with her name included. I'm like, okay, okay, there's the first problem. You say you want it to be anonymous. Mind you, Feinstein did not use her name in the printing of the letter in the newspaper. But upon hearing, seeing this, she came forward. And I'm like, well, if you want it to be anonymous, then why'd you come forward? That just seems a little odd to me. Okay, whatever. Okay, people are allowed to change their mind. All right. Um, so then Feinstein demands that the FBI, the FBI investigate this, uh, the, these allegations. Now, here's the thing. It's not the FBI's job to investigate these allegations. Okay? Uh, because the FBI deals with federal crime. This was, at best, a state-level crime that happened... 36 years ago when he was a minor, which means that if it had been investigated, let's say what had been investigated, let's say he was found to be guilty, you know what would have happened? It's like, it's it's not even an A-class misdemeanor, it's a lower-class misdemeanor. You know, it doesn't even count as rape, doesn't even fully count as sexual assault, 
by, uh, by, 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 by their standards. And what, and what would have happened is he would have gotten maximum of a year in some uh, juvenile detention center. And then his records would have been sealed. And we would never have found out about this at all. Okay? But Diane Feinstein insists that until the FBI concludes their investigation, that the, uh, that, that the committee and the vote should be, should be held until this is fully investigated. Okay, that sounds suspicious to me because it sounds to me like a ploy by the Democrats to hold the investigation until after the elections, which are coming up right around the corner for most people. Some have already occurred. All right, so then, like I said, FBI's job is not to investigate these crime, these type of crimes. If there was a crime, uh, as far as the FBI is concerned, they investigated him, they looked into it, they found nothing, and then upon hearing upon this, the FBI even said, uh, we really didn't find anything concerning this at all, anywhere. I mean, you got me. But, but they, but they, but they want to hold the interviews anyway. Okay. Sounds ridiculous to me so far. Now, so then, of course, uh, Brett Kavanaugh denies the entire thing, says he doesn't remember any of this happening. He, I, I don't know if he even remembers her at all, you know. And let's face facts. Uh, there, if, if, if you were to hold this standard to every man in America, you know, that's gotten drunk at a party with a girl, this type of thing happened, you know, no man in, uh, in this country would be eligible for any office whatsoever. Okay, about maybe, 90, let's say 90% of the men in this country. Were never, because let's face facts, guys have done, do stupid shit when they're drunk, and she does, and women do stupid shit when they're drunk. Okay, for instance, you know what, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, now, so, uh, Instead of the investigation, Brett Kavanaugh has agreed to say, you know, you know I'll, I'm happy to testify in open or closed court, whatever it takes, okay? Okay, and, and begrudgingly, uh, Christine uh, Blasey Ford uh, agreed to be interviewed, but under certain caveats. Uh, number one, that she and Brett Kavanaugh cannot be in the same room at the same time. <clears throat> First problem, in this country, you are allowed to face your accuser. Number two, she said that she cannot be asked questions by any type of prosecutor or Brett Kavanaugh's lawyer. <clears throat> no, 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 that's not the way these things work. You accuse somebody of a crime, his lawyer gets to ask you questions about said crime. Okay? Uh, let's see, also, she, and then third, uh, Brett Kavanaugh must be interviewed first instead of her going first. Once again, <clears throat> again, not the way this works, okay? A, ma a, a person cannot answer for uh, uh, charges if they don't know what they are first, okay? In this country, in just about every court that you know of, the accuser goes first. They make the accusation, and then the defendant defends themselves. That's the way these things work, all right? So this, all three of these uh, caveats here are completely unreasonable, completely illegal. Uh, no court in the world would ever allow for this. Even the, uh, 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 so, so no, no, that's not the way this works, okay? Now, there are certain other issues with her alleged coming testimony, which, by the way, is supposed to, I think, occur tomorrow for which she said she may or may not show up for. She's not sure yet, apparently. But she does assert certain things. One, she does not remember the exact or even approximate date of the incident. So, no, no, she remembers the year. That's about it. But uh, not, the, not, the, not the time of the, not what season it was, not what month it was, week, date, nothing. Okay. Uh, she does not know whose house it was she was at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has no idea. So she she was at some random house party where she allegedly was assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh. And number three, 
She has no idea how she got home. She has no idea how she got home. Okay, she has no idea what the day was. She has no idea where she was. She has no idea how she got home. But she's 100% certain that Brett Kavanaugh was sexually assaulting her while Mark Judge was guarding the door. Okay. Are you really going to tell me this doesn't sound just a little bit fishy to some of you out there? Let's, we'll discuss a little more, or actually we'll move on a little bit to the next case right after this little break. I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. Show the shirt is once again off the cuff. <laughs> Welcome back once again, everybody. Joe the shirt's off the cuff. I am your host, Joe the shirt. Thank you for listening, and I hope you're listening. Uh, like my, like I posted on uh, <laughs> on, on on this particular show. It's like before you unfriend me and call me a, a misogynistic asshole. At least listen to the show first. You know, at least give it a shot. You know, don't just you know, out of hand, just assume I'm wrong and I'm a misogynistic asshole. And it could very well be that I'm a misogynistic asshole, but first, let's let's, let's listen to the facts here, okay? The next lady on the hit parade, the next accuser, uh, that would be Deborah Ramirez, and this is this happens the year after uh, Christine Blasey Ford's accusation uh allegedly happened. Uh, Blasey Ford alleges that this happened in 1982. Uh, Deborah Ramirez claims now that this particular incident occurred in 1983, uh, Brett Kavanaugh's freshman year in college. Okay, now this is what she is claiming, all right? She claims that while she and Brett and several other students, uh, it's, she doesn't mention whether or not all the students were male, all the students, all the students were female, or whether or not it was a mixed room, doesn't, doesn't, you know, uh, clear that up for us. But she claims that while she was uh, really, really drunk, <laughs> again, <laughs> while she was really, really drunk, and uh, Brett was really, really drunk, and I'm assuming everybody in the dorm room was really, really drunk because they were playing a drinking game. And if you've ever been to college, or even if you've never been to college, but you have played drinking games, you know that the entire purpose of a drinking game is to get drunk. <laughs> so that you're not just standing around uncomfortably going, Hey, how you doing? So what's your major? So you're not doing that. <laughs> what you do is you play a drinking game. You play quarters or... I forget what the other good ones are called, but if you've ever played these games, you know that you get really, really drunk, and then, you know, you might try to hook up with somebody. These things happen, okay? I once had a woman, uh, her name was Amy, uh, being absolutely obscene with the drinking game we were playing, uh, with my girlfriend sitting right next to me, you know? And then what it was, was, uh, it, was, a, it, was it was a version of Quarters where... Okay, normally in quarters, you have slammed the quarter on the table, it flips into the shot glass, and then you point at somebody and you tell them to drink. In this particular game, you did the same thing. You slam the quarter on the table, it goes into the, it goes into the, into the shot glass, and then you make a physical movement uh, to, 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 to tell let somebody know they have to drink without pointing and without saying a word. So what this particular girl, Amy, did, and... Uh, and, and you picked, and you got to pick certain uh, physical movements for different players. So for me, every time she wanted me to drink, 
she would stick out her tongue and then flip it up and lick lick her top the, her top lip and show me the bottom of her tongue. That was a little obscene. <laughs> and believe me, me and my girlfriend got into a wicked evil fight that night. <laughs> anyway, so they were playing a drinking game, right? And uh, at one and what happened was, according to Deborah, she passed out. <laughs> And 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 she and as she was waking up, she woke up to a cock in her face. She was on the floor, and there was a dick waving in front of her face. <laughs> and uh, she says that she slapped it away, which of course made it have to touch it. Ew! And then uh, and then the guy that was doing it. You know, started to pull his pants up. Okay, now she did not see who it was. She didn't. Uh uh. But what she does remember absolutely distinctly was another student. Doesn't mention whether the student was male or female or who the student was by name, but saying that Brett Kavanaugh just put his penis in her face. Okay, was shouting it down the hallways. Now the exact wording was. Okay. Brett Kavanaugh just put his penis in Debbie's face. That's that's what a per, that's the person was allegedly yelling. Okay, I got a couple of problems with this. Okay, besides the fact that she was passed out drunk, obviously fucked up, and did not see Brett Kavanaugh. She did not see the man. She did not see the man whose penis was allegedly in her face. But that. Uh, Okay, that she, she distinctly heard somebody say Brett Kavanaugh. That the, she distinctly heard somebody using Brett Kavanaugh. I mean, the full name. And I'm like, who does that? Okay, and to, for me to illustrate this point is, okay, Brett Kavanaugh just put his penis in Debbie's face. Okay, it wasn't Brett put his penis in Debbie's face. It was Brett Kavanaugh. Like, 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 some, like the person who was saying it was like uh, Marsha Brady, who always used everybody's full fucking name, you know? It's like, Brett Kavanaugh just put his penis in Debbie's face. And, and my, other prop, my other deal is, who in college uses the word penis? <laughs> I'm sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> if this story were to be true, I would want to hear the word, I want, I want it to be reworded as, Brett just put his dick in Debbie's face. See, doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that see, isn't that like isn't that nice and clean and easy? You know, I mean, I find this hard to believe because people in college that are loaded off their ass don't go around talking like this. And like I said, uh, she like I said she was drunk off her ass, didn't see the person who who it was, but she just heard somebody say this. Okay, and if you if you're a normal human being. You've probably been lied about at some point in your life. Somebody has said something about you, said, said something, said that you did something or whatever, and it wasn't you. But you know, it, these things happen. You know, it could have been somebody mistook somebody. But like I said, nobody uses full names, and nobody would use the term penis. And like I said, she she is not an eyewitness to her own sexual assault. And the truth is, was it really a sexual assault? I mean. Somebody waves their dick in your face when you're in college. I mean, that's like par for the course. I mean, I've had I've had women come up to me and just ask to see my dick. This is literally true. I'm not lying on this one. I, I remember one time I was in I was in the kitchen with my buddy Kenny, and and before I knew it, his girlfriend runs into the kitchen going ah, going I want to see it I want to see it I want to see it, and Kenny goes see what. And she, and she goes, Joe's dick. I want, I want to see Joe's dick. And Kenny goes, what makes you think Joe is showing me his dick? And why would you want to see it? <laughs> Mind you, I do have a really beautiful dick. Just, just to let everybody know, to all of you ladies out there who have seen it, you all know it. it's go gorgeous. It's a work of fucking art. All right? Ask any of them. All right, but this... <laughs> Like I said, there, this this just seems to, to be that like there's a lot of holes in this for me, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 and and what really really starting to bug me about this 
about this whole situation is that these days it's it's not enough it, it, it's it's enough these days to just be accused of something to have your entire life thrown into the gutter I mean Brett Kavanaugh uh, if you ask anybody has been an exemplary judge he works and I think though in a Washington district he's a he's a Washington district judge I believe the second highest court in the land okay with an exemplary record ask anybody you know whether they were Democrat or Republican or whoever about uh, his decision-making process and how he interpreted the law nobody's had any complaints in all the years he's been he's been a judge all right uh, a brilliant lawyer before that so uh, but then you know like I said and then this particular story broke out uh, even more recently, of course, than uh, Christine Blasey's, uh, Deborah Ramirez, uh, her her, uh, her allegation came out about a week later. All right, and uh, as I said, you you don't need you don't need proof these days. You know, <laughs> you, you just the allegation is enough. You know, and, and and once again, this woman comes forward just a week before his the, the vote is to go to committee. I again, I. A little suspicious and again I'm not saying she's lying I want to know what the relevance is <laughs> you know what when we were in high when we were all in high school and I'm talking to all of you out there uh, any of you that drank even just a little bit when we were all in high school and we were all in college um, we all did some pretty stupid shit okay and uh, okay yeah maybe okay are, are these things let's say per se legal no but are they horrible terrible crimes that uh should necessarily scar somebody for life i don't know that's an individual decision i don't know but you know what i don't know of any woman on this planet that hasn't had some guy get kind of handsy with her you know try to try to do a few things try to like you know not necessarily force himself on her but you know maybe push a little too hard for his own good and uh, in those situations more often than not the women will just go hey get the fuck off me and smack them or whatever and I said it's I said, I'm not saying they're lying <coughs> excuse me what I am saying is that are these the type of things that would necessarily preclude Brett Kavanaugh from becoming a Supreme Court Justice I mean he's already a judge in the second highest court in the land all right you know so you're gonna tell me that you know he's he hasn't affected the way the world works already because let's face facts a lot of times uh, when when somebody like Brett Kavanaugh makes a decision and then that decision is sent to the Supreme Court a lot of times the Supreme Court will say eh, we don't feel like hearing it and boom that's it Brett Kavanaugh just made a decision for the entire country he's already been doing it all right, and when we come back from our break, we're going to be talking about our last accuser, Julie Swetnick, uh, right after this break. Until then, I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and here's our break.
once again, show the shirt is off the cuff. <laughs> Welcome back once everybody to Joe the Shirt's Off the Cuff. As always, I am your intrepid host, Joe the Shirt. And I'm off the cuff. Matter of fact, I'm not even wearing cuffs right now. I'm wearing a really cool uh, camouflage tank top. I look hot. Okay? I mean, I look hot. Alright? In any case, <laughs> we are now talking about our third accuser, Julie Swetnick, who comes at you uh, no pun intended, who comes at you <laughs> with the most serious allegations yet. I mean, at, at, at worst, uh, the first two, uh, one would count as maybe misdemeanor sexual uh, assault or, um, oh God, there's a uh, misconduct, not even assault, sexual misconduct. And, uh, and then Deborah's really uh, a amounts to uh, indecent exposure. You know, that's really, really what it amounts to, because he, he did not touch her at all, allegedly, if he did it at all. You know, she sl slapped his dick away. You know, really, she should be arrested for assault. Kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> okay, now. Yes, I am making jokes while I'm doing this show, because that's the way I do this show, okay? I make jokes. It's what I do. Now, this, like I said, are the most serious allegations, and they come up, I don't know, a day or two before um, <laughs> the uh, tomorrow's testimony, and, uh, and, or, and uh, two or three days before uh, this vote was supposed to go to committee. So we're going to find out what's going on here, all right? Uh, now, this one is rather vague on, the, on its timeline, because while the first one claims... 1982, and the second one claims 1983, Julie here claims that this happened sometime between 1981 and 1983. So, but at her, at best guess, they put it in 1982, meaning that Brett would have still been a minor, which means that uh, at worst, he would, he, would, he would have spent maybe a year in juvie, and then records would have been sealed. You guys would have known nothing about it. All right. This is what she says. Julie Swetnick accuses Brett Kavanaugh and other boys, including Mark Judge, who she says was at, at, the, at this event, and other boys as well, of using quaaludes or grain alcohol spiked in punch during a house party to get girls really, really loaded, to loosen their inhibitions, and then gang rape them. Yeah, yeah, you, you heard that right. She is alleging that these guys would hold these parties and then, and then you know, uh, spike the punch with quaaludes and grain alcohol and uh, then gang rape girls. You know, this is allegedly what was happening. Now, she says that on many occasions, now, you keep, a, keep an eye on those words, on many occasion, occasions, she saw a, a line of boys waiting outside of a bedroom to take the turn on whatever girl they were victimizing. Okay, see, first, right there, I have an inconsistency with the story. They weren't gang raping her. They were having to pull a train. Completely different, okay? They were being gentlemen and all taking their turn. I know, that's horrible. But I'm going to keep going. All right. Um, now, the reason I say uh, keep an eye on that term on many occasions she doesn't mean many occasions at one party that she went to. No, 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 no. According to her, she attended 10 of these parties. Uh, yes, she said uh, ten, she had 10 of these parties, and every time she witnessed a line of guys waiting to take their turn with some girl that, uh, that they had uh, trapped in this bedroom and were having their pull a train on. Uh, not officially gangbanging, because gangbanging means you have, you know, you, you have at least three guys there. You know, because if it's just two guys, you're having a three-way, or you're doubling her. All right? But it, what, what I'm saying here is that they were pulling a train. They were going one at a time. That's how trains work. Uh, she claims that what they did was prey on the weaker, more alone girls, you know, got them all nice and plied up with liquor, you know. And she says that when she saw this, 
she made it made her point that when she attended these parties, all ten of them, to make sure that you know she got her own drinks and you know didn't have anybody pass anything to her to avoid any of this stuff. <clears throat> um, of course, once again, Brett Kavanaugh and longtime friend Mark Judge, uh, one hundred percent deny this, claim they don't even know who the hell Julie Swetnick is, and uh, you know, and. and and now, I'm, I'm, I will tell you this right now. Like I said, I'm not calling Julie Swetnick a liar. But if these allegations are true, then yeah, this is, we're talking about a major crime that, that was happening. We're talking about a, 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 a absolute 100%, you know, first class A grade felony, okay? We're talking like prison time here, okay? Yeah, so we're talking about the kind of thing that even if you are a minor, you can be tried as an adult kind of crime, all right? But again, some inconsistencies. Uh, I, have, I have an issue here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she says that she went to these parties ten times. Who the hell goes to a party where you know girls are getting gang raped? <laughs> if you're a woman, why would you go to ten of these? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me, you know? That's like, you know, the, you, you, you ever heard of, the, you've heard of the black widow spider, okay? The male spider will go to her and mate with her, and then he'll leave. And people often think that, you know, you know, a lot of times what happens is, you know, the, you know, the, the female being much bigger <coughs> will then, you know, after mating with her, will, will grab the male and then kill and eat him. Now, it used to be thought that, well, that uh, some males were lucky. They would get to her, mate with her, and just run off. But that's not the way it works. Actually, the, the male black widow spider keeps coming back. The black man, he, would come, he, he comes back a second time, mates, runs. Comes back a third time, mates, runs. And he'll keep doing that until he, she actually does just grab him, kill him, and eat him. The males never get away. That it, it just doesn't happen. People used to think, scientists used to think that some males were lucky and they were smart. They they made it. They left. No, 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 no. The males always get killed and eaten. Same thing with uh, praying mantises. The males always get killed. Uh, sometimes what they'll do is they'll sometimes they'll mate and they'll get killed immediately, and sometimes they'll mate, run away, and they come back. Okay, and so and apparently she went to this party ten different occasions. Until uh, finally, on the last occasion, she says she was drugged somehow, and that she was raped by several several of the boys there, and uh, that uh, she, and this is what she says. She says that Brett Kavanaugh was present during this during this process. At no point does she actually say that Brett Kavanaugh raped her, but she does say that Brett Kavanaugh and his friend Mark Judge were present during the gangbang or train pulling or however way you guys want to, you know, figure it out there. Um, why would you, why would she do this? Why would she knowingly go to some place where the potential for her getting drugged and raped by multiple men was ever present, and that she said happened to, to some woman or two or three or how many? She doesn't say how many women this happened to per party, but it happened every time she went. She would see a line of guys waiting outside the bedroom, waiting to take their turn on the train. Okay, that's my, that's what that's my first problem with this. My second problem with this is at no point. Um, does she mention uh, her warning any of the other girls about what was going on? Anyway, doesn't it strike you as weird that you know? I mean, think about it. As a woman, you know that at a party, there's the potential for you getting drugged and raped, or for any woman there to get drugged and raped by a bunch of guys, but you keep your mouth shut. You don't say anything to any of the girls, but you do notice that the guys are preying on the weaker, lonelier girls, hoping to get them drunk and take them into the room and then, you know, have the train being pulled, all right? Uh, so she didn't warn anybody, even though she went to 10 parties. 
she she put herself in danger ten different times, even though she knew this was happening. Okay, maybe she didn't know the first time that this happened all the time, but she went to the party ten another nine different times, and every time apparently there was at least one girl you know pulling the train. Yeah. Um. Now, of course, Brett Kavanaugh, I'm not a judge, <laughs> categorically deny any wrongdoings in this in this at all. Uh, and they, like I said, they don't even remember her. Uh, and like I said in my post, uh, you know, let, uh, you know, let, let, I, I, putting aside these three women, who, I, like I said, I'm not saying are liars. I'm just saying there are a lot of inconsistencies with their stories, okay? Um, and, 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 and putting aside these three women, just for a second, you know, we're, we, we're, nobody even wants to talk about the 65 women that have stepped forward as character witnesses in favor of Brett Kavanaugh, saying that what a decent man he is, what a protective man he is, uh, what, what a sweet person he is, kind, generous. No, not those 65 women, what they say doesn't count. And that's fine. That's fine. Because you know what? Uh, you know, uh, Hitler killed, you know, 6 million Jews and caused the deaths of millions of others in open warfare. But apparently he loved animals. Okay? One thing's got nothing to do with the other. Okay? okay. Is it possible that Brett Kavanaugh did these, these these three things. Is it possible that he exposed himself to Deborah Ramirez? Is it possible that he, you know, tried, that he got overly rough sexually with uh, Christine Blasey Ford? Is it possible that he actually did run a train on Julie Sweat? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. But so far, there's no proof. There's no corroborating evidence, okay? And the corroborating evidence means that somebody else was witness to what happened, and and you've had all these alleged witnesses that co that could co corroborate what happened. No, these these witnesses that you're hearing about, none of them were actually there. What happened was that they were allegedly told about what happened thirty six years later. Okay, I mean that would be like you know, like you know, I I, I went out with my with my buddy Tony one night. And then, and then 36 years later, you know, Tony tells somebody, hey, you know, don't bang me in the ass when I was drunk. And then, and then that person goes, hey, I can, I, I can testify to the fact that Joe banged Tony in the ass. And, well, how do you know that? Were you there? No. So how do you know? Well, Tony told me. When? Yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not corroborating, corroborating evidence, Okay. <coughs> it's not corroborating testimony. No, nowhere near the words you need to drink here. What that is, is classified as hearsay, which is, as we all know, if you watch any type of court drama TV, uh, inadmissible in court. And like I said, and like I said the, the, the biggest problem I have with all of this, and it all comes out just before Brett Kavanaugh is coming before the uh, committee, to be voted upon, see whether or not he gets to become a Supreme Court justice. Uh, meaning to me that, you know, all these women were holding on to this, the Democrats were holding on to this information, holding on to these stories just to delay his appointment uh, before the elections. So that way the elections go, can go through, maybe they get a few more Democrats in the Senate, and then they can vote against him. So there you go. That those are the facts as I've come to understand them. Um, today's music is brought to you by who the hell? Are all by all the right moves. Uh, that's what they're called. Uh, we've heard Hollywood. We've heard the monster I've become. We've heard learn to love again. And now you're going to hear as we go about. You always bring me down. I'm Joe the shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I hope this has helped you guys on some level or another. Later. Oh, wrong, wrong song. My bad. You, you always bring me down whenever you're around. You drag Actually, I like the combo better. Drag.